In this question, we are given a number of kinematics values. So for example, it says the car is initially traveling at 25 meters per second. So we have plugged that in for the initial velocity. It then stops, so that would give us a final velocity of zero. And it stops in a distance of 1.2 meters. Now this is straight line linear motion, so that distance would correspond also to a displacement. We have that listed as well, and we simply need to find the time. So this is really a question of kinematics. We recall from the kinematics chapter that we know the displacement is equal to the average velocity, which is this whole term right here, multiplied by the time. So what we want to do is solve this equation for time. If you look carefully, you have a division by two right here. So we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by two so that the two in the denominator and the two in the numerator right there would cancel. We have two delta x is equal to final velocity plus initial velocity multiplied by time. Then to solve for time, we would divide both sides of the equation by that term in parentheses. That would cancel that term out on the right-hand side, and there we would be left with the time. So we'll just erase this since it's going to cancel, slide the equal sign over to there, and we have our equation for time. We can just punch everything in that we have listed on the side. And so when you plug those values in and press the enter button on your calculator, you're going to get 0.096 seconds as the time interval. So this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. Moving on to part B, we are asked for the magnitude of the average force on the car. Well, in this chapter, we have learned about the concept of impulse. And we can see that impulse is equal to force, or average force, multiplied by a time interval. And then it equals several other things. So we have all of these different ways of expressing impulse. The most useful thing that we can do right now is to take this expression, force times the time interval, and set that equal to this right here. So when you have this sort of equation, you can kind of pick two of the items in it and set them equal to one another. So we will go ahead and do that. We have the average force multiplied by the time interval is equal to the mass times the final velocity minus the mass times the initial velocity. We are asked to determine the force. So let's divide both sides of this equation by the time interval. The time interval will cancel out on the right or on the left hand side. Yes, I do know my left from my right. And there we have the expression for the force. We can simply plug everything that we know in. I would find it convenient since mass appears in both terms right here to factor it out actually. So we'll just rewrite this one more time like so. And then we will plug in the known values. Now the mass of the car I believe was 1400 and it was. So we'll have the 1400 kilograms multiplied by the final velocity which was zero minus the initial velocity we recall from our previous setup was 25 meters per second and then divided by the time interval that we just computed in part a you can see how everything is connected together here it's very magical so 1400 times negative 25 into 0.096 gives us a very large number. We have force equals negative 364583. This will come out in Newtons. I presume the question just wants the magnitude of the force. Yes, it does. So magnitude just means to make your answer positive, basically. So the magnitude here of the force will be about 364,583 Newtons. This becomes the correct answer to part B. We move on to part C, which wants the acceleration. And then for some strange reason, it wants us to express that as a multiple of the acceleration of gravity. Okay, we'll do that. All right, so we'll come down here and we will recall again from kinematics that the final velocity of an object equals its initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time. So we're going to solve this for acceleration by subtracting initial velocity from both sides. This gives us final minus initial velocity equals at. Divide both sides by t. And then you have your expression for acceleration. It's basically, we'll flip it around here, final velocity minus initial velocity divided by the time interval. So we'll take the final velocity, which again was zero, minus the initial velocity and then divide it by the time interval. And when we do this, we're going to get 
about 260. Now it will come out as negative 260. It'll be meters per second squared. To change it to a magnitude, you just take the absolute value. So there's the magnitude of the car's acceleration. To express it as a multiple of g, what you would need to do, I suppose, is just to divide this by the value of g on Earth, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. So we'll go ahead and do that, and we get about 26.6 g. Now, your homework system might have the little g in there already, so if you were to box it in, it would just be 26.6.